Hey, I'm Thomas. Welcome to Pilot's Workshop. This is the second of three videos in which I'm going to show you how to make a custom needle file handle. In this episode we are going to start making all the required metal parts for this project. The first piece we make in this video will be the metal cap that will later be glued to the wooden body of the handle. To understand what that part has to do, we first look at the original handle. So there you can see that the element that we are about to make has to hold the internal thread that enables the mechanics. It also has to offer enough space to accommodate all the parts of the internal clutch. Making of the piece begins with aluminium rod. First comes a light facing cut. Followed by a center drill. Next we can define the outside of the part. After a light touch with a tool, it is first important to measure the outside diameter that you just created, to then zero out the dials on your support sleds. This makes progress a lot quicker, because you can avoid any additional measuring as long as you don't change the tool. After the outside diameter followed the part that would disappear into the wooden body. Quick touch with an earning tool, make sure that the glue holds perfectly and permanently. Then a quick deeper with the needle file. And then the part could be drilled in two steps. What followed was a quick countersink and the part was ready for tapping. Because the lowest speed of my machine is 250 rpm, I always rotate the machine by hand on these tapping jobs. These small M10 by 1 taps are two step cutters. Finally, the piece could be parted off. After cleaning the part with acetone, followed the mixing of the glue. I'm using an epoxy glue with a 5 to 1 resin to hardener ratio. Because of the small amounts of glue needed here, my kitchen scale wouldn't help me. Instead I'm trying to scale the two components by the eye by simply comparing the size of the two bubbles. So far this technique always worked for me, but you have to be careful. And as always the most important step is to mix everything very thoroughly. Then it was time to bring in the pieces. The resin that I use has a curing time of about 30 minutes, so I took my time to spread the glue evenly on all affected surfaces. Then it's already time to put it together and then to wipe off all the squeeze out carefully so that you don't have to try taking it off once it's dried.
After giving the glue enough time to dry, you can carefully put it back into the lathe and give it a final sanding. The outside surface left from the resin infusion was very shiny and a little bit spotty. But with wet sandpaper you can really polish the outside surface up and make it look like natural wood. Next I'm going to start with the moving parts. Or to be precise, with the ring shaped piece that I was mentioning in the first video. Looking at the original part you can see what we're going for. The through hole in the middle simply has to be big enough so that the file handle can pass through. And on both sides it receives a deep countersink which will be explained later. My version of this piece is again from aluminium. After defining the outside diameter, the center hole is drilled and the first end countersunk. And after parting off, the ring gets turned around so that the other side can be countersunk. And so another part of the assembly is done. The next element we are making are the two chuck parts. These are the parts of the file handle that actually hold the needle file. They work in a simple but effective way. As the needle file gets pushed into the file handle, these two pieces almost completely surround the 3mm round end. However, they don't touch each other but have a little gap which allows them to be squeezed together slightly. And that's where the ring piece comes in. The two chuck parts have the same angle on the ends as the countersink in the ring piece and as you screw the tip in the two halves of the chuck are getting squeezed together that way holding the file. And again this begins with aluminium rod. And after facing and turning the outside diameter the part could be drilled to the precise diameter of the needle file end, which in this case was 3 mm. Then the top slat was set to 45 degrees, so that the 90 degree chamfer on the ends could be made. I'm doing this here with a parting tool, what looking back doesn't appear very smart, but my idea was that this way I could also part it off at 45 degrees. And that's where my camera stopped recording. So that's it for this episode. In the next video, which is the last episode of the short series, we are finally going to make the most prominent part of the handle, the tip. So make sure to also stop by for the next video. Until then, thank you for watching.